decision for CAF to come to Equatorial Guinea, as you know, was not an easy one. You could not have prepared a competition for more than four years in a country with four venues, and then uh, prior to the competition, at least two months, you decide to move it to another country. So it was really a tough decision to be made, but it was clear for CAF Executive Committee since the beginning that the date of the tournament would change. The tournament would have to be played from the 17th of January to the 8th of February. And at a point, cancelling the tournament was an option as far as they could not match the deadline. So when the decision was taken on the 11th of November to take uh, the competition out of Morocco after the refusal of Moroccan authorities to host the competition at a dedicated period, the discussions were started a few weeks ago with few countries to know if they will be keen to host the tournament in case Morocco withdraw. And part of those countries were having Equatorial Guinea, but the problem with Equatorial Guinea was that the country host the tournament in 2012, but it was a co-host. Uh, then the president of CAF has to travel to Equatorial Guinea to discuss with the head of state, and thanks God, the head of state of Equatorial Guinea, Mr. Obiangema Mbazogo, show a lot of commitment, show a lot of... Uh, he decided uh, just uh, after 30 minutes audience with CAF president to host African Cup of Nations. So by the time uh, that decision was taken, the two parties had to come together to save what could be, could be done at that period. It was, it was not a risk, it was more a challenge because, as I've previously said, Equatorial Guinea was already the co-host of 2012, so we were sure that we have at least two venues that were operational and that were used less than three years ago. The other problem was to secure the two venues, so that was Mongomo and Ebibeyin, and of course, after the first trip in Mongomo and Ebibeyin, that was on the 22nd of November, we were some of us a bit skeptical about the readiness of those two venues by the time the competition starts on the 17th of January. But the week after, we have an expert of STRI, a company specializing in grass, uh, in field grass, who came in and who assured us that uh, if you are able to ship the pitches in Equatorial Guinea, in at least two weeks' time, those, uh, th th those pitches will be available for the competition. And then you have to rush to beat the time and be able to secure those two venues. And it was done thanks to, one, once again, the commitment of the head of state here, who made it possible for us to ship from Spain uh, the pitches, training pitches, uh, match pitches for the two venues of Mongomo and Ebibeyin. And uh, of course, at the end, we can see since the competition has started that we were able to match this challenge. Things are not perfect, but at least we were able to secure at the end of the day the four venues and have the competition played in normal conditions so far. The main challenges here, as you know, are are more about uh, logistical aspects, you know. You cannot prepare a competition in 50 days like you do in four years. So for the first day of play, you was having a lot of, uh, of problems security-wise. Uh, areas were not uh, well mastered by teams, not well mastered by volunteers and so on, but we're improving games after games. So a part of those logistical uh, logistical problem, I think most of, of, the, of the things were on ground. Of course, we have encountered some problems when it comes to transportation of team, we have encountered minor problems when it comes to accommodation of teams and delegation, but uh, as I'm saying, we are improving day after day, and uh, we are able to, to, to say that by the end of the tournament, will be at the maximum and will be able to deliver 100% what people expect for such a competition. But as far as the field is concerned, it was an open competition and we can see uh, so far that uh, uh, no one can really today predict who will be the final winner of the tournament. And those who are watching on TV, I think they are, they are very satisfied by the quality of the game so far and uh, also by the quality as well of the TV production because it was one of the key challenges, how can we set the TV production here in less than 50 days? At the end of the day, we are able to secure TV production, do in HD and try to have the, the requirements that are needed for such a competition. The media coverage for AFCON 
is not the ideal we could have expected, considering the fact that uh, we are not able to, to provide to media all the facilities we are used to. For instance, we are not able to secure media hotels, we are not able to secure media shuttles sometimes, but with the uh, help of the authorities, we have been at least able to secure media visa upon arrival, because as you know, Equatorial Guinea is not a country with so many embassies around the world, and it was a challenge for media traveling to Equatorial Guinea on how they will secure a visa. With the assistance of the state here, we have been able to give them a letter who was guaranteeing them a visa upon arrival. And so far, we have main, the main press agencies are on ground, AFP, Reuters, AP, and uh, that makes it possible even for media that are not represented here, but who are subscribers of those press agencies to be kept on, day, on, on a daily basis on what's going on. And uh, we'll see at the end of the day if we are able to reach the same target of 9.8 billion viewers we have reached in South Africa when it comes to TV audience, but uh, we, we, we do not expect less because, as you know, the competition has been growing in interest for the first time ever. You have game broadcast live in India, which was not done before. Uh, so it just gives you an idea on how far media and over, uh, all over the world people are interested in African Cup of Nations. We, we are still learning from this experience. As CAF, we are still learning from this experience, you know. There were, there were few things, few details that were let on the, under the control of uh, the local organizing committee usually that will start taking care more, like the state of the pitch, like what we have done in Mongomo and Ebibayin by setting those venues in less than 50 days is something amazing. We don't expect to be in such constraint every time because it's not the ideal situation. We won't be having an Afghan prepared in 50 days every time. We hope to be back from 20, starting from 2017 in more or less normal condition of preparation. But one, what we have learned from that experience once again is that we must believe and we can believe in Africa. Africa is the future of the world and where there is a will, there is a way. We have, we have had a lot of support, we have had the commitment, we have had the engagement of a man, the head of state of Equatorial Guinea. We have had also the wise leadership of the CAF president to make it sure that with the relationship he has, Africans will be able to enjoy this party they have each two years. So we have learned on how we can deliver on the stress, how we can deliver on the pressure, and we have been, we as CAF staff, been able to cope with all that environment so far. So, we expect really to improve the quality of uh, organization on, on Afcon and not, not consider any more time like, like something that not enable you, that avoid you to do things. You can be under time constraint, but be able to deliver at, uh, at an optimum. And I think as an as African, the tournament is still, go, is still going out, but I really wish we as African will be proud at the end of the day by being able to achieve what was considered for many people like a gambling. I think uh, they can realize today that we are not gambling and that we have been able to match the challenges and to beat the deadline and to be here since the 17th of January and hopefully will be with the grace of God uh, on the eve, on the 11th of uh, February, on the eve of the final, able to say that it was a challenge it has been done with the Sons of Africa, with the support of leaders of Africa, Mr. Obiangema Mbazogo and Mr. Isayatu.